What is good? Bang. Fresh crack for a fresh episode. Got it. Got my man Big D with me. How you doing, bud? Doing great, man. Just uh, just living the dream, the football life right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're approaching the part of the season where people are starting to get nervous. And what should I do with this team? And... You know, probably, you know, some overreaction, some rightfully so. Uh, so we got a couple of teams here that want to know, you know, kind of which direction they should head in. Uh, so so let's let's jump right into those. The first one's going to be a patron. Uh, appreciate you. A little $5 holler. As we said, this is the patron, uh, Swiggity Swooty. Uh, it's a 12 team. He's two and five. Uh, he's 11th in the league right now. Scoring, we've got six point passing touchdown. It's a half point PPR with a tight end premium. He says that this is a very active league. He's got eight owners that are that have done quite a bit of trades for that are kind of content to, to not go too far uh, one way or the other. But uh, but eight owners that are are pretty active. So that's that's always good. Know your league. Know know what kind of um, action you can get because um, that's that's part of this here. And so for his team, what we've got here is we've got uh, quarterback wise, we've got Goff, Stafford, Dak, Murray, Lance. And, and then he's got Bennett there on the taxi squad, um, which is a pretty solid quarterback. Uh, yeah, quarterback uh, team right there. And then um, running backs, we got Bijan and Brees, followed by Monty Spears, Pierre Strong, and Keontae Ingram. Wide receivers: Garrett Wilson, T. Higgins, Burks, Quentin Johnston, Mike Wilson, Jamison, Bateman, and a couple others. And then tight end wise, we got Andrews, Andrews, Kincaid, Dulcich, Washington, McBride. So. Pretty stacked, uh, pretty stacked team. Uh, picks wise, we got a second and a fourth is what we have left in the arsenal for next year, and then we got the full arsenal first through fifth round uh, for twenty twenty five. Twenty five, yeah, yeah. So, so his question is, he, you know, I, I don't think that he thinks that his team is um, horrible or he needs to completely uh, strip it down. This is more for like a retool uh, slash, you know, re rebuild a little bit. Um, and, and his main question is, uh, for some reason, I'm wanting to move off Andrews to gain some draft capital or to tear up at my QB uh, QB spot. So that was a lot of data uh, for you on the <laughs> for you on the uh, yeah. uh, on the podcast side of it. I, I, I apologize. Ho- hopefully you're able to follow. But um, the main question here is he's got Mark Andrews and a tight end premium. His backups are Kincaid, Dulcich, uh, McBride and uh, Washington. And uh, he's looking at, can I move off Andrews to either get some capital back because I've only got my second left um, and I'm, I'm ranked 11th, or can I take Andrews and a quarterback and tear up? Um, and I, I guess from a tier perspective, um, you know, probably if we were to rank these quarterbacks, I would go Murray. This is my rankings, Big D's rankings, Murray, Kyler Murray, Goff, Dak, Stafford, Lance. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I'd go. I'd, I'd, I'd go. You know, pr- fairly similar. I, I could. I could. St- if, listen, if we if Dak gets back to the Dak we saw in the last time we saw Dak, where he was running around some more, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think I think Dak should be ahead of golf. I think I still probably have him ahead of golf, uh, but that 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 window probably has shrunk down a good bit. Um, sure. Uh, so, but if Dak gets back to last week, Dak of running around there was just like, damn, we haven't seen that since that ankle injury, really, mm-hmm. uh, which is which would really made Dak very, very uh, just the floor so great for Prescott. Um, you know, I, I think Dak would for sure stay ahead of him, but golf maybe closing the gap a little bit. But yeah, um, that, that's basically where I'm at. What, what would it take to tear up? So when we talk in tiers, so let's pull up a, a, some tiers here for QB. Um, I mean, I, Patrick Mahomes, right? Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Burrow, Lamar. Jackson. Yeah, Lamar and maybe Anthony Richardson if you're, you know, if you're looking for some youth. But but I guess if, I, if I'm thinking that when I'm thinking of tier or, or the way that he's saying this question, I'm thinking he's trying to get top tier, right? So for me, that would be Mahomes, Allen, Hurts. And then, you know, Lamar or and or maybe a top three draft pick. You could throw that in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a tight end premium with Andrews. I I just I don't know. It's half point. So I'm sure that's the premium just going to full point. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Probably. Yeah, that's that's normally how it works if they don't 
really say, or at least that's what, how we're going to, <laughs> that's how we're going to pretend. So we'll say it's, right. you get a half, uh, an extra half bonus point for, for tight end. Yeah. I, I don't know how much I'm, you know, how crazy I am about trying to, to really get up and do anything crazy. I think Lamar would be my, my target potentially there. Cause I don't know how many people are, you know, maybe one of the bottom tier teams has hurts Mahomes or Allen. Um, but you know, most likely most people in Superflex aren't really going to try to come off of those guys. I don't see those guys traded a lot, a whole uh, traded around a whole lot. Do you? No, not, not very often. No. Right. And maybe you could swoop in on Herbert cause the optics haven't looked great and he's, you know, hasn't mm-hmm. been as, as good as expected here. Um, and that last game was, yep. you know, so if you feel good about Herbert, maybe there's an option to, to go get him. Lamar obviously coming off the best game of his year. So maybe not the the week to go get him, but maybe, you know, some people just are, are never going to be 100% bought in on Lamar. Yeah. Um, there was probably a little bit better time in, in week five and week six when he was putting up 10 and 18 um, to go get him. Now the 33s, you know, he looked really good. Obviously, you know, I think they could play that Detroit game again four or five times. And I don't think the outcome is the same on any of those um, for, for the Ravens there. They just really put it on them in a hurry. I don't know that that would be my number one position here of what I'd be trying to do. If I could figure it out and get it done without leveraging a, a, a whole lot, I would. Yeah. I was trying to think while you were talking and, uh, and that's difficult. Um, your, your voice is so, uh, you know, so <laughs> hypnotizing. I couldn't, I couldn't know. Um, I'm stalling because I don't know. <laughs> I, I yeah. think I, I just, I, I, I have a really hard time getting off Andrews. Um, personally, even if I'm going up to a, uh, an upgrade, I just, I don't, I don't really know who's going to make that deal. Right. Like if I'm a competing team, I don't know if I'm going to take Andrews and w- one of those quarterbacks that we talked about, you know, Dak, uh, Goff or Murray. Um, I, I don't know if that would be enough for me to, to, to move off Lamar personally, but, if, if they're rebuilding, maybe. Um, but again, Dak and Goff are what, 30? Murray would probably be your best bet if you're if you're trying to target a team that's not competing. Um, right, and his value's down, so you're not getting yeah, deep market on playing. him. So that's not exactly. the best way to go about that. Yeah. Um, I, I would probably sit tight on the quarterback for the moment unless there is somebody who seems like they're – willing to deal a quarterback in Superflex, which is usually, you know, pretty difficult. Like I said, I, you know, may, Trevor isn't putting up elite points right now, but I think he has you know, all the metrics point to that. He's, he's playing really well. Um, yeah. and, and the knee injury, uh, kind of just happened. And so I know I'm in a super flex league where I was kind of hoping that, that Trevor would be that 22, 21 to 24, four or five point a game guy this, this year. And it hasn't happened. Um, so there may be some disappointment there and, you know, he's, he's, you look at that game log, it's not great. And I think Trevor is, has all the tools to be elite and has the things around him to be elite. Um, it just, you know, hasn't really blossomed quite into that. And I think all the, the matrix advanced or metrics and advanced stuff points to, to him being pretty good. He's had a lot of drop balls. He, he could be, you know, any, any there's, I know for a fact, I've seen two or three drop touchdowns, um, mm-hmm. by the Jags there. Um, and, and I believe that a week or two when we looked into this, he was they were leading the league in, in uh, drops or, or somewhere near there. Um, but, you know, I, 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 trust the, I trust the system, I trust the coach, and I trust the human, the, the quarterback, to want to be great uh, in Trevor Lawrence. So he might be your best option if you wanted to tear up, per se. Um, but he's, you know, still at the moment, you know, quarterback, you know, golf is out playing uh, Trevor on points per game wise. So, right. Um, it, it's, it's a tear up to, to tear down, but, but right now it's not really going to kill you, you know, because you're maybe not trying to necessarily win, or maybe you think you're too far out of it right now. Well, I, I would say, I mean, try to win. I mean, you don't have your first, so there's, I mean, at this point, you're just helping whoever has your first. So, uh, right. you know, set your best lineup, try to win, <laughs> see what happens and and maybe not make any moves right this second. Cause I don't think you have to. And, and, you know, we, we've still got, uh, what have we got? Nine weeks, seven, We're in, we got yeah. seven more weeks of, of play before the playoffs even start. So I, I don't, I mean, I know that you're two and five and I know that you're 11th right now, but I don't think you're out of it, especially with Murray coming back. And like, there, you've got enough 
you've got enough pieces here that I would still be setting my best lineup. And, and you might be setting your best lineup. This may have uh, been a bye week, but the screenshot that he provided, he's, uh, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't have um, some of his star players in there. And, and, T and, it and, just, Brees yeah. and Monty's hurt. Um, yeah. So, you know, so I, I mean, I, I would just set ahead. it. And then I would say in two weeks from now, reassess and then, and then think about it. If you win, if you all of a sudden are four and five, you're going to feel a lot different than when you're two and five, you know, uh, four and five, you're on a two, two game winning streak, which I think you could probably do with this team. And, uh, you know, by then Murray's should be back, I would say within, within a couple weeks there. And now you can really make a decision. Do you really want to pivot off Andrews or how, how has your team looked in this, this last couple stretch and that, um, and and that also gives some of these players uh, the ability to flex a little bit, like uh, like Kincaid as an example, him having the the the, the stage, if you will, with right. uh, Knox going down, g- gives a little adds a little bit of value. Um, I I didn't look up what the, um, you know, what these teams who who's playing who, so I'm not sure value wise how it's uh, how it's going to work for your for your actual players like Goff. I'm not sure who he's playing in the next couple weeks, but right, but. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. Uh, you know, Mick McBride's about to get a get a shot as well. Just just mm-hmm. like uh, Kincaid. So both yeah. of those guys should should see a little bit. I mean, you're like I said, you got Brees and you got Bijan right off the rip. You got you know two of the best running back assets moving forward, and they're still really young um, mm-hmm. and and are going to continue to just I think regain value. And obviously Bijan's value is still good, but it's it's you know a little bit weird right now from that last week. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge guy who thinks that you need to have like elite quarterback play to win in super flex. I think right mm-hmm. now you're getting what you need from golf and Stafford. Uh, and if yeah. you get, if you get, um, if you get Kyler back and you got Dak in the way, like you're in good shape. You can't, you once Kyler's back, you're in really good shape to trade a quarterback for mm-hmm. another quarterback and kind of tear down or tear up. If you want to tear down, you would, you would be able to add a really good player and tear down to somebody you think who could climb up kind of the ranks a little bit and you could add a good player um, or you could add, like you've been saying, Hey, maybe, maybe a quarterback and, and Andrews could, could get you somewhere and maybe you'll feel, you know, like, Hey, McBride's crushing and, and I've, I'm seeing good stuff from Kincaid. So, you know, those guys could go, or maybe somebody might be interested in, in McBride or Kincaid getting hot and, and you could keep Andrews for, for the next two or three years. Um, because I don't necessarily want to trade Andrews if I'm anywhere near to competing, and you're, doesn't seem like you're terribly far off um, from right. competing. I mean, Traylon, I think if we could get some quarterback play and be healthy, Garrett Wilson's down here. I mean, you got Garrett Wilson, Bijan, and Brees. I mean, that's if you could start a startup that way coming into the season, you'd be fucking stoked. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and you're you're you got depth at the tight end position which i like so you, one of those guys are movable and people should be after him t higgins is just you know arrow pointing down right now but should bounce back so you got ammo to do things if i were you what i'd be doing i, I just i'd probably want to add another wide receiver that's really good to this mix and you got michael wilson yeah. waiting in the wings and you got quentin johnson which hey i know the optics on quentin johnson and everybody's real down on him but we've talked about this before like you know I don't think anybody came in thinking Quentin Johnson was going to come in and just terrorize the league right away. I think that he kind of was a bit of a project and he got called on maybe even a little sooner than we'd hoped. Um, and, and hopefully he can continue to stack good days um, on themselves here and, and get a little better. We haven't seen anything from Jamison Williams. Maybe he's a bust. Maybe he's not. But uh, we saw in the Tampa game there that, you know, one play can make your day with Jamison Williams real quick. So if he could just get, get it, get his shit together a little bit, uh, that could be an asset. You got Montgomery here, who's just been awesome. So that's you can kind of do whatever you want with him. Somebody might pay you big bucks for Montgomery right before the trade deadline. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Oh yeah. Um, and and we love Spears, so you know we like we like that. Bateman, you know, hopes and dreams are dashed, but there's still a good potentially a good player in there. You got Boutte, um, you got Dulcich, another tight end. You got Lance. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you're in good shape. I don't think I, I think that's a good I think what you said was good. I, I'd sit tight for a minute here uh, and see where you're at. If you can maybe grab a couple wins here and, and, and reassess. 
Yeah, and and I just to highlight what you said. I, I don't think I'm looking at QB. If I'm moving off something, I'm looking to upgrade my wide receiver room with this particular yeah. team. I mean, yeah, you, you've got some decent shots there, but I don't think you have. Um, I mean, Garrett Wilson is definitely definitely a stud. I'm not saying that, but I um, but this year he's not so much a stud, right? Because right. of what's going on in in, uh, in over there in New Jersey uh, for the Jets. Um, People won't like that. Sorry. Over in New York for the Jets. Um, but but I, I think that if I'm going to trade something, may, maybe that would be the play that, I, you know, um, I, I still think you could sit tight for a little bit. But there's probably going to be some value adds here. Like um, Olave just had a, a bonehead move where he's going 70 and a 35. And, you know, there's uh, who, who knows what's going to come out of that situation. But if there's a buy, if there's a dip on Olave because of A, what happened on the field with him and car yelling at each other and then and then all of a sudden you've got something going on in the news he might be a player that i'd look at and see if you know can i can i get something done for him uh, on the relative cheap can i move um you know can i move a higgins and a in a monty and get a lobby you know so maybe yeah. maybe some move like that um and and that offense i think uh this is half point ppr so in that offense that that might be a play that you could do um you know, I, 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 but for me, if if this is my team, I'm setting my best lineup. I'm waiting a couple a couple weeks here, and in week um, ten, you've got the Rams, you got the Chiefs, you got the Dolphins, you got the Eagles. So you got quarterback, you got the quarterback barrage of Stafford, uh, Mahomes, um, Tua, and Hurts all out. That might be a week where you look to move one of your quarterbacks, and and you yeah. know, and at that point, you can decide what direction you want to go. Right. And if you're going to do the quarterback move, I always try to get a quarterback back, even if it's somebody you don't love, like even if it's Desmond Ritter or, you know, Howell or something where it's, you know, or, just, or a value pick. Right. Like, right. I think you can I think you don't have to get a quarterback back if you get a high, you know, sure, should sure. Be a high, right. you know, a late first or a high second. You can always get a, a, a dash quarterback. Yeah. in in the draft um but yeah definitely with the idea of either getting a quarterback or a pick back that i can draft a quarterback if i need it so and and you know going back real quick before we wrap this one up and we'll, we'll talk about one more uh team real quick at, before we get out of here um the fact that you don't have your first i know you have the second and and you're trying to increase you know obviously you'd like to have the highest second you could but the fact that you don't have your first right here and this team isn't t- in terrible position and maybe one trade in a few weeks could set you up to for, for a chance, um, you know, I think if you had some first and your own first, I'd be saying, hey, and you feel like you want to, hey, look, you're just fine with waiting one more year. I'd be saying, hey, get get the points out of your lineup. Uh, right. But uh, like Big D said, you don't even have the first. So, you know, I'm in favor of that in this particular juncture. All right, let's let's move on to this this other team uh, real quick um, and, and throw him kind of what he's asking about. So this is a YouTube question from at CX Kelly. Jay Wayne fielded this one. He has 12 man super flex. It's tiered PPR start 10. He's two and five tenth and points four. We'll skip that part for now. He said he's in a retool. My roster is loaded overall. Just a bad luck year. Uh, so the running backs get half a point PPR, wide receivers get full point PPR, and tight ends get 1.5 PPR. I've never played in a league like that. Have you, Big D? I do. I have. Yeah, I have a league. It's it's a lot of fun. It's um, what if you do play in a league like that, or if you do ever plan to play in a league like that, you got to take advice on fantasy Twitter or fantasy YouTube with a with a grain of salt and really look at your look really look at your league settings because it, it really changes the value on some of these players. Right. So that's that would be my first thing leading off with this is I haven't done this, so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. And I think that's the best piece of advice that's probably going to come from this is I'm look at those scorings. I don't even have a league that's set up like that that I can go. That's something that I love to do is go look at other leagues when scoring you know, is a little different to go look at leagues that are semi-close and look at who did what. Um, yep. and it's just a good barometer because it might really change your opinion on some shit. So QBs are Burrow, T-Law, Bryce Young, and Deshaun Watson. Running backs are ETN, James Cook, Javante, CEH, and Dobbins. Wide receivers, CD, Waddle, Garrett Wilson, DK, London, Quentin Johnston, Michael Wilson, Elijah Moore. And tight end is uh, Trey McBride, Hunter Hurst, or, uh, yeah, um, mm-hmm. Gasecki, Washington, Bellinger, and Jelani Woods. 
stabs there. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your general thoughts on this overall? His his first question was James, give James Cook get Tajay Spears in an early second. And I know just judging off of your um oh, running yeah. back rankings from a few weeks ago, that's an automatic for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's uh I, I wouldn't care if this was standard league. I, I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, you know, without without looking at his roster, Spears is lined up with the potential to be a high, high volume at the very least, probably the same points wise on a week in week out basis as cook, you know, with maybe a little bit higher floor in my opinion. Um, but in my rankings and personal opinion, I think his ceiling is even higher than that. And I think his floor is higher than that. Plus you get an early second, which right there, I mean, I would trade James cook for an early second in this format by itself. So to trade, and get Spears in addition to that, I would, I would definitely do that. Um, yeah. He has for, two mid 24 firsts or he, so he says mid right now. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't list the rest of the picks. So, and whether or not those are his own or not, um, at least one of them. So mm-hmm. uh, it seems like we've been getting kind of a lot of these questions right now. Cause I feel like we're in that, in the point of where you're, you haven't decided if you're really rebuilding. And I think, you know, like I said, in the last video, I think there's a lot of, information out there of when and how you should rebuild and none of these teams that i've that we've talked about so far in any of these videos that we've done have been rebuilds uh, yeah. you know i i have had rebuilds that have teams that i've had for a long time that you know you have receivers and players who are all getting into their 29s and you have some ammo to start do i go for one more do i do, do i retool and th- these right. aren't it th- these you know, the, the, the youth movements here and all these teams already have youth, uh, you know, throughout this team. So what's your. Yeah, uh, I mean, general... to give CX Kelly here his 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 due. He did say this is a retool right, for a right. rebuild. So he, he's he's got a he's got his finger on the pulse here. I mean, I think with this team, like, um, you know, I definitely think he's missing that tight end um, upside. McBride is really nice. I like it. You know, he's going to be front front and center. Look. Yeah. But with those two mid tier um 2024 first. I'm not really that worried about it. There's some good tight ends coming out or should be coming out in the 24 class. I know one of them, uh, Georgia, um, Brock Bowers. Thank you. <laughs> Completely went out of my head. I, maybe I tried to, um, mentally like release that from all the pain, but, um, you know, there, there's some tight ends that are coming out that you can look at next, uh, next year. Um, but I think your team is set up for, you had Burrow hurt, T laws struggled a little bit. Um, Young has obviously struggled, and Watson's been hurt. Uh, so right, yeah. right out the get, your your quarterbacks um, in the first six weeks have struggled in in their own yeah. various ways. But I mean, but from a dynasty perspective, it you, you'd love to see it. You'd love to have this team uh, with yeah. that quarterback room. Uh, we talk about his running backs. He's got and and so now we're talking about a PPR, right? So. Uh, or sorry, excuse me, half point PT, PPR. So ETN See, s- slow Cook. start a little bit for ETN, yep. but been been good. Cook has been you know up or down, and you know with uh, Josh Allen there, it's always hard to say. Javante has been he was injured. He, I'm surprised he's even playing to be be honest. Like I, yeah. I when I looked at him, I I thought he was a 2024 play more than a 23rd play. So he's he's already surprised. And then Ceh um, and Dobbins. Uh, Bummer you know, for Dobbins. Bum, big bummer for Dobbins. So, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, I, I don't hate the running back room. I think. Yeah. I'm trying to see if he gave a. I don't see what the the start is. You know, like, like how many yeah. flex and and that. So we're just gonna start ten. So start I don't 10. know what the I don't know what the how that breaks down. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's super flex, right? So, uh, two, four, six, seven. Okay, so it's either one wide receiver or excuse me, three wide receivers or two flex. So yeah, um, but then let's talk about his wide receivers because you know we're we're looking at again we're we're tier based here. So his wide receivers with one point PPR are Lamb, Waddle, Wilson, right there. You know, crazy DK London, uh, also crazy uh, Q. Uh, QJ, uh, Mike Wilson, and Elijah Moore, which are just right. wonderful to have as as your bench. Two, so two rookies, and and again, Elijah Moore really hasn't had Deshaun Watson for you know a few weeks here now, um, mm-hmm. and they were just kind of figuring it out together. So yeah, 
Yeah. And so for, for me, this roster is already set. Like um, you, you have the flexibility with those next year picks. I might take DK or London, one of those two uh, glamour shots and, and see what I could get from a tight end perspective to kind of upgrade that, that tight end, you know, that tight end, uh, tight end feel. Um, you know, maybe can I, can I take uh, DK drop down in my rankings uh, a couple weeks back when we did did the review? Not because of anything in particular, just because I, I'm I'm I've been I, I have my Washington my Huskies hat on. I don't have my Seahawks hat on tonight, but just just watching him on the field, the dude's dude's still great. Like I'm not he he didn't fall out of my rankings. He just fall fell out of that top tier but he hasn't for everybody else and so that might be a player that i would look to upgrade and see what i could get in the tight end you know from a tight end perspective uh, this is tier based so with a one and a half point you know it may not be one for one like you would in your normal leagues but um you know if i could take dk and and look and get um you know, like a, like a, one of those decent rookies that came out like Michael Mayer and, and, you know, obviously plus on, on top of that, or, or another couple shots in your, your tight end room, I think would, would look really nice right here. Um, uh, I think Kincaid's probably priced out um, in this format. You might, you might be able to look at Pitts. Pitts is a uh, unbelievable in tier based tight end formats. I, I think that, he may be coming back up, but his value has been so sunk for a while. You might be able to do something there and get get a pits. But but point being is on this team, I think I'm looking at the tight end upgrade, uh, even being 11th uh, or 10th in points four with a two and five record. I, I think if I could do that, I'm 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 feeling really great about 2024. Seeing what happens in 20, in 2023, but feeling really great about 2024 in the future. And um, and again, we covered it at the very top. But should I trade, uh, give Cook and get Spears in the early second? Hands down, yes. <laughs> he says yes. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the the running back room was something that I would want to improve upon a, a little bit. I think Javante will be, end up being just fine. Um, I, I don't I don't hate Cook. But he, I'm sort of indifferent on him, um, and Et I, I think is showing you know how good he can be. Wide receiver room looks good. I agree with you. Tight end ad could be uh, uh, advantageous here. Um, exactly who that is. I uh, come up with a couple of names here, uh, but the wide receiver room, man. I, I don't think you need to do a, a terrible amount. Um, no, I'm hanging on to most of those guys. Probably not the best time to trade DK on on the injury. Um, but I, he would be the guy that I'd be trying to to move if I could, um, or or if you if you could get something good for London, I guess so. But he he's, he's also my guy. But um, I, I I would I would like to upgrade this running back room, but I'm not going to do that right at this moment. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Moving. I, forward. I don't think you necessarily have to directly upgrade this running back room in a right. tier based. Um, you know, because from a points perspective, I think you're. You know, I think you're in a good shape. I, I would love, like I said, I would love Spears on this team and that 24 early second to kind of help me with my running back room in the future. But, but I, I completely understand what you're saying. It's a, it's a little shaky. You get one injury to to Cook or Javante. Obviously, this year you're in, <laughs> you're in dire straits in that yeah. in that room. So there there is room there. But I definitely think in a tier based um, one and a half point tight end. Um, that's that's where I'm looking to to first make my move. And then, and then um, if I could do some adding along the way, I'm, 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 you know, I'm fine with that as well. Yeah. You just, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that right now. That would be what I'd be angling towards in the future near, near the right. end of the year or in the off season, adding a piece to my running back room, uh, maybe using a receiver um, to do that. But you know, my, I'm always going to build the receiver room up uh, while this is happening, which you've uh, clearly, Done. What, yeah. what what you've done? Um, yeah. Mission mostly accomplished there for the most part. You just yeah. had you just had a little bit of uh, bad luck there, and it's not to say that you need to stick with any of these wide receivers per se. Um, but I would wait until n- none of them, none of those, none of your big dogs right now are in the best position to go after somebody else and and get a haul or upgrade to you know you know any of these guys right now. If if Amon Ra was on your team you'd be getting uh, what, what you want from basically all of these guys, you know, from, from a points per game 
perspective right. and expect from those guys. You're just not getting it from them right now, whether it be quarterback injury or, you know, CD has been up and down uh, this year in London, you know, quarterback, DK injury and bottle injury. Right. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, you got some rookies and I think Elijah Moore is like, a, you know, a nice little depth piece that, that could be a bottom of the, you know, a flex third wide receiver that can get you, you know, 12 points a game. I think if Watson can get healthy and this offense can get going, cause I think he can be a, a little bit of a PPR machine and the usage is looking good. But, you know, I would have said Gibbs would have been a guy that I would be a target, but you know, just had a good game. Um, so that's, you know, probably not, not the best idea, but like I said, I'm I'm, I'm going to target a running back for this team. I'm going to wait though. I don't I don't need to buy one right now. I'll wait until off season or at the end of the year, um, and 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 see if I can make a move there. Um, you know, there's really not that run, many running backs that I want to tell you to target at the moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, obviously the 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 the, the Breeses and the JTs and the uh, you know you have ETN. Uh, Kenny Walker has been great, but you know, nobody's trading those guys really right now. Um, so, yeah, I think the running back I would, I would look to get is Spears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could get Can a hammer at home anymore. Do, do yeah. that. Yeah. Get Spears. <laughs> uh, I love that. I love that. You're loving some Spears right now. Um, tight end wise. I, th- I think, you know, uh, some people are going to roll their eyes at the pits. Um, you know, I'm going to be acquiring pits. If I can, you know, the cat might be out of the bag on Laporta at this point, although two down weeks in a row. um, Could be be something there. Potentially. I mean, not not crazy down, but um, not certainly not where where he was 11 and seven and, you know, just was coming off some big weeks. But, you know, Mayer showing some life, I think, like you said, was was a good one there. Um, I mm-hmm. I love McBride. He's, he was a target for me all off season, and he's been trending up the great hurdle this week. I think you're seeing a little bit out of that. So I hold on tight to him. Um, now, if he starts breaking out and you say, hey, I want to upgrade and you can upgrade, but I'm only coming off of McBride and upgrading to one of those already great guys like yeah. the Hawks um, and and the uh, the Andrews um, Wallers if he could get just steady consistent targets like the last three weeks you know I think you see what what could be there but he's a little bit older so probably wouldn't be going after him but you know again just like the running backs there's not that many tight ends that I want to target at this particular juncture I, um, I think the other one that I would especially in this format is Cole Komet because I think even with the uncertainty of Justin Fields, Cole Komet's pretty locked in in that Chicago offense, uh, at least from contract wise. And so even if they bring in a new, a new rookie uh, quarterback next year and and move on from Fields, I still feel pretty good about Komet. And I don't think he's not top tier, so I don't think you have to pay top tier premium price. But he's um, from a volume perspective, and especially in this tier based world, like I, I think uh, or. Or, t- or a league, um, I, I think that that he would be a, a, a sneaky good player to kind of to kind of price check and see what uh, see what the price is on him. I'm looking in my tier base here to see where. And like you said, you got two first round picks coming up here, so yeah, I think you're in pretty good position, man. You you get you're in in the driver's seat to make you know a big splash if you want to and really upgrade a position, or wait till the off season where you have those picks gain even more power because uh, they'll get it an all time high in the off season and in the off season, you'll be able, you know, the, the, the value of some, you're, you're really young, man. You can put an older guy or two on this team that can help you get fantasy points. Yeah. Uh, and those guys will be at an all time low in the off season where your picks will go up and the veterans that are 28, 29 will all go down. Um, yep. So, you know, adding one of those wily veterans to your team, moving into next year, like a, you know, like a digs or, you know, just those, those older guys that people are going to be looking to check out of in the off season um, could be advantageous as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So good. Got job, anything else Dick to add Kelly. to this? Yeah. You no, job, no, man. just a uh, great, great build here. Um, look forward. You know, if you do get something, if, if something does happen, you know, let us know. Hit us up. I, you you did this in the comments. So hit us back up in that comment section on, yeah. on, on the tubes or keep the trade or questions if you're coming. On, if you're on X, gonna give it to you. If you're on yeah. Twitter, you know, let us know. Or, um, hey, if you if you enjoyed it, uh, hop over on Discord with us and, and and let us know. Pop in and let us know. Either way, let us know what what you decide to do and and how this works out for you. Thanks for the question. 
Yeah, appreciate it, man. Appreciate all you guys out there. Uh, comment below, five star reviews, five dollar hollers on the Discord. Uh, you get three extra episodes a month with that, um, plus obviously Discord access. So, you know, we can be talking about questions as well as all the other people in the Discord can give their feedback on questions. It's just a nice place to bounce things around. Somebody will usually always, you know, tell you what they're thinking. Uh, and a lot of the times, you know, before we start a Patreon episode, We'll ask for any questions that you have, and we'll address those on the Patreon episode as well as other thoughts uh, that we may have. So, uh, we'll, like I said, we'll be we'll be getting diving more into some specific rebuilds. We're going to try to get those those, those cash for clunkers uh, going here soon, mm -hmm. where people have some some real uh, real problems on their hands that they're they're trying to solve. A lot of these were a little bit more retooly, uh, but again, uh, I think. That is somewhat of the state of where we're at right now is, is people get panicked because they're not winning right away. And it's like, no, 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 you, you got it, man. You, you've you've done the assignment. You're yeah. <laughs> you're trending towards the right. Dude, everybody on a lot of these teams is so freaking young. You you should you should have five or six years here to, to, to go, you know, get on a run for for a year or three. And, you know, that particular team we just talked about had two more draft picks to add to this. So, you know, you always want to be uh, staying semi young with the adding picks around them and then being able to kind of use those picks as ammunition to do whatever you want or the younger guys to get a couple of older guys here or there, help you get over those humps um, and, and kind of stay. I like to try to stay 50 50 on the team. Um, you know, mm -hmm. Got some guys who I know I might not help me. I got some younger guys who I know are going to be the cornerstones for the team for a while. And then I have, you know, either guys that aged out as my cornerstones and now are good, but the value has gone um, or just adding those wily veterans uh, in the off season. So you said it, brother. All right, guys, we appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.